तरुण संशोधक मित्रांनो नमस्कार आजचा वक्ता म्हणून माझ हे पहिलं पदार्पण झुम हे शक्य झालं हे डॉक्टर सुनील यांच्यामुळे यासाठी माझ्या नवीन संगणकावर सगळी माहिती भरून झुम प्रस्थापित करून मला जय्यत तयारी करून दिली ती प्राध्यापक डॉक्टर 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 विश्व अडलुरी यांनी तीनदा डॉक्टर म्हटलं ते अडखळलं म्हणून नाही तीनदा म्हंटल कारण त्यांनी तीन विद्या वाचस्पती पदव्या हस्तगत केल्या आपल्या खरोखरीच व्यस्त दिनक्रमात त्यांनी यासाठी वेळ काढला झुम त्याच्यावरच पदार्पण कसं करायचं याचा अक्षरशः बोटा धरून आणि धीरानं सामना करत मला शिकवलं ते तनश्री रेड्डीजनी शिवाय अतिशय आणि मनापासनं कष्ट घेऊन तिनं पीपीटी बनवलं ते किती सुरेख झालंय ते तुम्हीच मला नंतर सांगाल तर या सगळ्यांचे आणि त्यांच्या व्यतिक्रांत पालकत्वाचे कृतज्ञ कृतज्ञतापूर्वक आभार मानून आणि तुम्हाला सगळ्यांचं स्वागत करून मी आजच्या विषयाच्या विवेचनाला सुरुवात करते आजचा विषय लक्ष्मी अ ब्रँडेड अॅनिमल इंडियन कल्चर इज अ पॅन्थिस्टिक कल्चर पीपल वर्शिप मेनी डिफरंट डिटीज ऍट वन अँड द सेम टाइम अमंग दोज ऐकू येत आहे ना हो हो जनरली she is generally and mostly found in vishnu temples accompanying him her popularity is seen increasing day by day especially in the modern industrialized society the dhanalakshmi vrata that is the vow of worshiping the goddess lakshmi is becoming more and more popular among the middle class people however that does not mean that she is a modern deity she is in fact one of the oldest indian deities the references to the word are found in the vedic literature right from the rigveda it would be interesting to see that the word lakshmi means what the word lakshmi means there whether it has the same meaning or different one and further if it is different then whether they are connected involving some gradual change regarding the meaning and etymology of the word lakshmi it is always said that lakshmi is the one who has lakshma a mark that is she is the goddess who possesses a mark the mark of beauty luck or fortune here in an attempt is made to find if it really is the mark of beauty if so then what it is and whether it is mentioned in the vedic literature and if it is not recorded there then what is the lakshma after which the great goddess has occupied her epithet from the vedic times now let us see the dictionaries for the meaning of lakshmi while commenting upon the word lakshmi occurring in rigveda nirukta derives the word from lakshmi hi labhatva lakshanadva lapsanadva lanchanadva लशतेर्वास्यात प्रेप्सा कर्मण लग्यतेर्वास्यात आश्लेष कर्मण लज्जतेर्वास्यात अश्लाघा कर्मण दट इज लक्ष्मी इज सो कॉल्ड फ्रॉम ऑप्टेनिंग ऑर फ्रॉम इंडिकेटिंग ऑर फ्रॉम अ डिझायर टू ऑप्टेन ऑर फ्रॉम मार्किंग ऑर इट मे बी डिराइव्ह फ्रॉम द रूट लक्ष मीनिंग टू डिझायर ऑर फ्रॉम लग मीनिंग टू क्लिंग or from lajja meaning not uh, not to praise beautling at roth had given the meanings of lakshman i will not go into the german translation a uh, german words so in the entry lakshmana are the meanings in monier williams having marks or signs or characteristics endowed with auspicious signs or marks lucky fortunate lakshman according to him is a mark 
sign, token, characteristics. A good or lucky mark, excellence. A bad mark, strain, blemish, and also definition. The word Lakshmi rarely is feminine. Also, it is an adjective, he says. It is a mark, sign, to uh, Lakshmi. Hmm? Name of the goddess of fortune and beauty. This is the meaning he gives of Lakshmi. Frequently in later mythology, identified with Sri and regarded as the wife of Vishnu or Narayana. She sprung, according to Ramayana, with other precious things from the foam of the ocean when churned by the gods and demons for the recovery of the Amruta. She is also variously regarded as a wife of Surya, Prajapati, of Dharma, and she is the mother of Kama, sister of mother of Dhatri and Vidatri, the wife of Dattatreya, the good genius or fortune of a king personified, royal power, dominion, majesty. Aptes dictionary states almost the same meanings. Now, what is the work done by the previous scholars? All the scholars were naturally interested in the origin, nature, development, and also the etymology of the name Lakshmi. Various scholars have presented various opinions in this matter. For example, Oldenburg comments, I will skip the German and I will go to the translation. It is obvious that German, uh, there is connection between the word Lakshma, Mark, and Lakshmi. Then quoting the passages from various texts, we conclude, Lakshman is an outer mark, either of lucky or fortunate, or of misfortune, dis uh, misfortunate disposition. And Lakshmi herself is such disposition, which is, or which can be shown through a Lakshman. Then in the footnote he adds, I doubt whether Lakshmi can directly mean Lakshman. The double-sided representation of Lakshmi, that is Bhadra, Shiva, Punya, on one hand, and Papa on the other, gradually recede and only the good or auspicious meaning of the word remains. Further he states, both Shri and Lakshmi are Ardra and Padma Malini. Later, the word hostile or malignant part is no more called Vyoza, that is angry Lakshmi, but as a Lakshmi. Thus, Lakshmi, according to him, basically is the goddess incarnate and also the goddess of luck or fortune and beauty. However, as is clear, he has not explained what the marks are. May they be of luck or of beauty? Khonta hesitates to subscribe to Oldenburg's view and expresses his opinion, Lakshmi is an object or a being, the very existence or presence of which means something auspicious. Lakshman is more vaguely a token or mark, a fact connected with the external form of beings or objects as perceived by the senses, which may induce man to infer that there is something auspicious, favorable, etc. It seems worthy to notice that the feminine polysyllabic stems in Vedic denote, as a rule, beings or objects. Part of them refer to power substance to lead an independent existence. For example, Tandri is weariness, Nandi, refreshment, bliss, etc. Quotation complete. He further states that Atharva Veda has the word in connection with marks made in the ears of cows. The text which is included among the Pauhtika mantras is to accompany the ceremony of ear marking cattle for the sake of prosperity. In stanza 3, the Ashwins are requested to make the Lakshma in order to thousandfold thriving Lakshmi, Posha. For Varaha, Mihira and other post-Vedic authors in general, Lakshmi denoted luck, fortune. Quotation complete. This sense is developing in the Vedic text 
he further states a prospering destiny a condition of prosperity quotation complete thus having dealt with the topic in details konta concludes so lakshmi may originally have been the divinity representing the signs evidence or prognostications of luck and prosperity thimo has derived lakshman from the root raksha according to moti chandra i quote lakshman is the outward visible sign of a happy or unhappy disposition lakshmi is the disposition itself which is proclaimed or even can be proclaimed by lakshman according to atharva ved the human being is born with 101 lakshman the noble conception of lakshmi finds expression in such terms as bhadra shiva and punya while its evil epithet pap recedes into background and finally only the auspicious meaning of the term holds the field quotation complete now gerda hartman and mayer have totally opposite views in this regard according to hartman lakshmi originally expressed the sense of alakshmi alone and represented a sign which was evil and unholy without any trace of auspiciousness in it auspiciousness in it and that lakshmi first was the goddess of poverty similarly mayer also opines that originally lakshmi is nothing auspicious but it is a disease of the crops stuck to the plants which is like a scar or a mark he derives the word from the root lag this lakshmi and other lakshmi der romishen robigo he says der geni des getrides rostes that is the spirit of dry corn were originally related to each other afterwards the attributes as disease were transferred to the new divinity called alakshmi and the auspicious corn spirit merged with shri and developed into lakshmi the goddess of wealth and fortune dhal in his copious dissertation goddess lakshmi origin and development has concluded i quote thus the development of the concept of lakshmi in the sense of prosperity well being can be connected with lakshma meaning sign or symbol kalidasa's use lakshma lakshmim tanoti is not accidental that lakshma which was found to bring good luck and prosperity could easily be turned as lakshmi taitiriya samhita recommends offspring of a hornless goat to brahmanaspati and this hornless goat is designated as lakshmi because the particular lakshma of having no horns leads to prosperity and well being quotation complete in atharva veda which is used in a propitiatory rite against nirruti the goddess of death and destruction occur uh, uh, goddess uh, uh, nirruti the goddess of death and destruction occur the words punya lakshmi and papi lakshmi referring to that dhal concludes i quote he is orissan scholar so the proper pronunciation i am told is dhal in the above suktas we mark the development of the concept in two ways namely the papi lakshmi and punya shiva bhadra lakshmi the signs or symbols which bring fortune good luck are designated as punya lakshmi but the signs which bring bad luck misfortune and misery are designated as papi lakshmi this papi lakshmi ultimately became a lakshmi of the later age and carried all the evil traits which bring misfortune misery bad luck in one's life quotation complete thus it can be seen that all the scholars agree on one point that lakshma and lakshmi are connected with each other though the connection and also the nature of the marks do not become clear most of them have taken lakshma itself as lakshmi and to denote one and the same thing as is mentioned previously the word lakshmi occurs right from the rigveda 
इट ऑकर्स एज भद्रा लक्ष्मी भद्रैशांग लक्ष्मी निहिता दिवाची विच परसुले ट्रांसलेट आई कोट लक्ष्मी इज सो कॉल्ड फ्रॉम हर लक्ष्म दट इज भासन शाइनिंग द वर्ड अधि मीन्स शी बिकम्स केपेबल कोटेशन कंप्लीट ऑल्सो इन द श्री सूक्त लक्ष्मी इज रिफर्ड टू हवे वर बोथ दीज ऑकरसेस आर कंपेरिटिवली लेटर एट ऐतरे ब्राह्मण इट इज सेड पुण्या एव लक्ष्मी ही पुण्या मेव तत् लक्ष्मी संभवा रिगार्डिंग दिस लास्ट साइटेशन एज इज सीन बिफोर ढल हेज स्टेटेड the particular lakshma of having no horns leads to prosperity and well being however without stating any convincing reason there are some important mythological passages in the vedic text that is maitrayani samhita taitriya samhita etc which are important regarding the etymology of the word lakshmi the word lakshmi occurs uh, in the myths it will not be out of place here and since it is a mythology group to state here the position of myth in general since man began to think scientifically mythological literature was considered as a product of superstitions and primitive minds it was held to be meaningless mass of and looked down upon as a mere chaos and a shapeless mass of incoherent ideas it was neglected by scholars as only a tale tale matter but only very recently that is 50 years back scholars particularly anthropologists have begun to take interest in mythology and have started to look at it with a different view point the word myth is derived from the greek word mythos which itself means something uttered be it a statement or a story and thus it consisted mainly in oral literature that passed over a long period and through a continued chain of people it could not remain unaffected by the impact of their civilization and therefore mythology is in a way a mirror of beliefs and behavior of the people and also represents the social and cultural background of a particular community thus the study of mythology is now accepted as important for the understanding of various civilizations in a way it can be said that there is not much difference between the origin of science and that of mythology man's incessant quest of how and why in nature as well as in society in the is the fountain head of both the difference lies in the means used to answer these questions the substratum of science is thought and logic whereas that of mythology is feeling and fantasy a myth gives an account of how a particular phenomenon may it be an island a plant a particular right a sort of human behavior or that the world itself came into existence it is but natural therefore that a considerable numbers of myths are cosmogonical The following myth in the Taittiriya Samhita is a very good example of a myth of origin. Thus it reads: Indro palasya bilam apavrunot, sa ya uttamaha pashuhu asid, tam prushtam prati sangruya udakhidat, tam sahasram pashavo anudayan, sa unnataha abhavat, ya pashukamasyat sa etam aindram unnatam alabhet. इंद्रमेव स्वेन भागधेयेन उपधावति सएव अस्मै पशून प्रयच्छति पशुमानेव भवति साहस्रीवा एषा लक्ष्मी यद उन्नतो लक्ष्मीयैव पशून अवरुंधे यदा सहस्रम पशून प्राप्नुयात अथ वैष्णवम वामनम आलभेत एतस्मिन्वै तत् सहस्रम अध्यतिष्ठत 
when one obtains 1000 animals he should offer an animal to vishnu upon it did these thousands rested hence this dwarf one stretched it gives support to animals when born similar myth with a little variations occurs at maitrayani sohita thus it reads indro valam apavrunot tata sahasram uday तस्य सहस्रस्य अग्रता कुभ्र उदय तस्मात साहस्री लक्ष्मी ही आहु यश्च वेद यश्च न दट इज इंद्र अंकवर्ट द होल और द हाइडिंग प्लेस ऑफ वल थाउजंड केम अप फ्रॉम इट अम्ट वन वॉज द फर्स्ट वन टू कम अप एमंग दोज थाउजंड हेन्स दैट वॉज कॉल्ड थाउजंड फॉर लक्ष्मी बाय वन हू नोज एंड वन हू डज नॉट similar story occurs in kathak uh, samhita also but there is no reference to lakshmi in it now obviously these myths have their origin in vedic man's first ever encounter with the two kinds of bulls the humped one and the non humped one the humped bull is the indian variety which is called bos indicus so maybe that seeing the non humped bull they explain that phenomenon according to their wild imagination that myth is an extremely cultural reality which can be approached and interpreted from various and complementary viewpoints it is true in the present case as well however it is necessary to see before uh, necessary to see before if there are any more occurrences of the word lakshmi in the vedic text in maitrayani samhita the word lakshmi occurs once again as goshtho vai nama esha lakshmi hi the cow pen really is this lakshmi from the above passages it is clear that lakshmi here is a collective noun the animal which was followed by thousand animals that male animal is called here as thousand fold lakshmi then what is this lakshmi also if the world is connected with lakshman then what can it be one point however is certain that almost all the scholars already quoted up have started have stated that lakshman itself is lakshmi and that lakshmi is the one having auspicious and sometimes also inauspicious marks in the above passages however there is no reference at all to any kind of auspicious or inauspicious signs or marks then the question remains unsolved as to what these marks are now there are some important passages in this regard in the maitrayani samhita which the previous scholars dealing with lakshman and lakshmi or vamana have not taken into consideration those might throw some light on our present problem The fourth kanda in Maitrayani Samhita is a killer kanda, an appendix. The second chapter in it is called Go Namika, that is, regarding the names of the cows. It is unique in the whole of Vedic literature. Gandhi has concluded regarding it. I quote: The analysis of the data shows us that Go Namika was essentially a sort of manual of cattle keeping. its conclusion in the maitrayani samhita 
represents the period of transition from cattle keeping to a mixed e economy based on agriculture and cattle keeping quotation complete regarding agriculture in maitrayani samhita it is said yada susasyam bhavati atha pratitishtat pratitishtati yada na sasyam bhavati atha na pratitishtati manje that is when there is good crop there is stability and when not there is instability it also speaks about some aspects of the life of the cowherds and about some of their rights this gonamika their rights their beliefs and practices it is in one of such passages that the word lakshma occurs in the context of one such practice which is to mark the cattle in one's own herd with some specific sign the passage is if the cattle are not so marked then they would not come back home it was a sign or mark of identification as well as of ownership thus it reads yavatinam idam karomi guyasinam eva uttaram samam kriyasam iti gavam lakshma kurya guyasinam eva uttaram samam karoti i translate may i do this to more next year than i am doing this year saying so he marks the cows or or and the bulls thus next year he does this to more cattle translation complete the word lakshma occurs six times in this passage both separately as well as in the compounds it tells us that the marks were variously made each family each gotra had a different mark the cows of vasishtha <coughs> where's thuna karni sorry the cows of agastya were vishwa vishke karni whereas those of jamadagni were karkari karni it is difficult to understand how exactly the marks were it is told that no hole should be made on cow cow's ear lest they go under the control of nirruti it is necessary to take into consideration in this context what baro has suggested regarding the etymology of the word lakshma which is quoted by mayerhofer under the entry lakshmi it is very significant and noteworthy however scholars have not taken cognizance of it baro has derived it from the root dah and has commented i will not go into the details because it is very tedious so ultimately the words are derived from the he says to burn the original meaning being a mark branded on the horns of cattle sheep etc then he gives the references from avesta also the relation of avesta the the ek the i can't pronounce it properly sign to the sanskrit participle lakshita he gives the cognate is exactly the same as that between sanskrit participle bhakta food that is and bhakshita further he has observed that i quote the rugveda has only nominal forms lakshya lakshman lakshmi meaning mark sign etc the form lakshita is not found in the vedic literature quotation complete what baro has stated is right that animals are generally herded with fire brand fire brand as a mark of possession but it is necessary to verify the etymology in the light of the following maitrayani samhita passage which discusses various ways of marking for herding it says kruram va esha pashunam kurute yo akshunute नवा एतम एता अमुत्र आगच्छन्ति या अनक्षिता इति तस्माद अक्षितव्या न तेजनेन अक्षुणया वज्रोवे तेजनम यत तेजनेन अक्षुणया वज्रेण पशु नर्पयेन न श्यामेन अयसा क्रूरम तत अशांतम इक्षुदंडम अप्सु आसयित्वा तेन अक्षितव्या तद्दिशिवं तत शांतम अथो आहुहु लोहिता यसा इति तद्दिशिवं तत्शांतम सो 
I translate, one who mutilates or impairs the animals does a cruel thing to the animals. But if they are not impaired, they do not come back here to him. Hence, they should be impaired. But one should not impair them by some sharp weapon or instrument. That is as if to submit the cattle to Vajra. It should not be done with black iron, but red iron. On a piece of sugar cane should be soaked, a piece of or a piece of sugar cane should be soaked in water, and then with that they should be pierced or impaired. That indeed is auspicious. That is cool. Good. Translation complete. Gande has commented on this. I quote: This probably implies that some sort of dye was used for. Marking with mere water would have been discernible, would not have been discernible. Such marking must have been of a temporary nature, perhaps for some festival in honor of cattle. Quotation complete. However, it might not be so. After soaking the stock in water and thus making it soft, it might have been inserted in the ear of the animal. Afterwards, it might get fixed in it. And is difficult to be removed. That is considered to be Shiva, auspicious and Shanta, cool or harmless. Passage complete. Making the cattle in this way seems to be a normal, universal practice which is observed even now. Now it would be clear why the etymology of baro cannot be accepted as it is, since it cannot be said with certainty. That there is a reference in the text to marking by literally branding, that is burning with a firebrand, and also because there are stated other methods of marking for herding. Hence, deriving the word only from the root the would be an avyapaka, non-pervasive derivation. It would not cover the other methods. Hence, it seems better to derive it from laksha to mark. Also refer to the practice of uh, Atharva Veda. Also refers to the practice of marking the cattle, where it is mentioned that Ashwins marked the ear of the cattle with copper knife. Making such marks was a practice of all, namely devas, asuras, and also human beings, and it was done for thousandfold abundance of cattle. Translation complete. It would be of some help to know about the ways or devices of identification of animals in general. Regarding it, Banerjee has stated, I quote, the identity of an animal has to be established soon after its birth. Many dairymen name their cows but do not have any marks for their identification except as they know them. For a small herd, the naming of animals may serve the purpose to some extent. But for large farms and moreover with pure breed animals, it is always necessary to put some sort of identification marks on each animal. Cattle can be marked by ear tag, tattoo, number tags attached around the neck, or horn chain, branding numbers on horns and hips, ear notches, photograph, or by color sketches. Quotation complete. Now let's come to the conclusion. Thus, from the above discussion, it becomes clear that Lakshman is a mark, a mark of identity and possession done on cattle, a cow, a bull, a sheep, or cattle in general, so that they are not lost and come back home. We cannot be sure whether it is branding in the original sense, that is burning with a firebrand, but it is surely marking or herding. It is a mark which is common to all the animals of one particular flock or of one particular person. With Lakshma, the cows or the cattle are marked for possession. Actually, there are at least four scholars who have explicitly mentioned that it is a mark on cattle. As is seen, Baro has said, the original meaning being a mark branded on the horns of cattle, sheep, etc. With reference to Atharva Veda, Kunta also has concluded that it has the word in connection with marks made in the ears of cows. 
there are two more scholars who have stated that lakshman is a mark made on an animal for identification and possession it is a mark of herding or branding in derivative sense while de uh, dealing with rugveda gelner refers which reads salakshma vai vishurupa bhavati and comments i quote this mantra related to twashtru is employed in an animal sacrifice in the rite of touching the dead animal similar verse occurs in taittiriya samhita which is vishurupa yat salakshma bhavata he further comments that what oldenburg has stated in this regard is right that the salaksh that the lakshman is a mark done on an animal lakshmi also has the same meaning Oh, sorry. Lakshana also has the same meaning. Quotation complete. The mark helps recognize the animal of one group or of one owner since they bear one and the same mark. Hence, Salakshman, he says, is having one and the same mark. That is, an animal bearing similar mark of a particular flock. <coughs> Vishurupa means having a different mark. or having a mark of a different color that is an animal or cattle belonging to different group he further says same idea is expressed in the yajus which means that which had previously the same mark that is which was from the herd of the remaining or surviving animals should be now of a different mark that is hence for this animal belongs to the flock of dead animals quotation complete thus lakshman is a mark of herding or branding made on an animal and one who has the mark is lakshmi that is an animal or cat this is my conclusion none of the four scholars however have connected this meaning of the word lakshman with lakshmi the reason might be while dealing with lakshman they had the vedic passages before them whereas while dealing with the word lakshmi instead of having the vedic word lakshmi they had puranic lakshmi the deity before them but this is just a guess in the maitrayani samhita passage is a word which needs explanation it is the word kubra kubra means a humble there after lakshmi got personified and mythologized as a deity kubra also in good sense became kubera the treasurer of gods and in bad sense bad sense became a kubra in marathi a man having hump on his back now about the gender of the word in connecting lakshman with lakshmin is the sense of having a lakshman that is an animal or cattle there might be some difficulty of grammar according to taddita rules that is the rules regarding forming the derivation from noun one possessing a lakshman would be lakshmin a masculine adjective the nominative singular form of which would be lakshmi which is found only in the taittiriya samhita passage in all other vedic texts it is lakshmi hi similar to that in the later non vedic literature moreover the feminine forms of it according to grammatical rules should have been lakshmini but it is not found to be so the word lakshmi itself is used in the feminine gender in the taittiriya samhita passage which reads sahasriva esha lakshmi yad unnatah there are two ways to get rid of this difficulty first is to accept that the form lakshmi is an irregular form for lakshmini or second option is the word lakshmi just like the word gau was used in the beginning in both the genders that is masculine and feminine and hence taittiriya samhita uses the form lakshmi in feminine it might be due to this difficulty that the unadi sutras state the rule lakshyar mud for its formation and derive it from the verb laksha with the suffix mud added to it as is clear from the above discussion this lakshma is without any attribute it is neither punya nor papi it is just a mark the word lakshmi is found first which means having the mark or sign 
of herding or branding and then it is qualified with punya or papi hence punya lakshmi would mean the docile obedient or disciplined animal and papi lakshmi would mean vicious mischievous or troublesome animal now if the atharva veda hymn is translated with these meanings there would be no difficulty on the contrary perhaps it would make more sense so the new translation will be mm, oh vicious animal jump forth away from here get lost from here and fall forth there by the hook made of metal by the mark made by metal we attach you to the one who hates us that animal which is liable or about to fall or jump on me as a creeper on a tree o oh god savitar who has golden hands and who grants us wealth place it elsewhere away from here 100 animals are born with this mortal together with his body right from his birth just a moment sorry the most vicious among them are sent away from here may jatavedha bestow upon us those which are auspicious that is docile or obedient these and these have i separated like the cow separately tied to a pig may the auspicious animals stay on here happily those who are vicious i made them disappear now about the number this meaning would thus fit in where the word occurs in plural but what about the taitriya samhita and maitrayani samhita passages where it is in singular and a collective noun in this regard one more passage again from gonamik kanda is important which reads gaurvai vak gaur virat gaur ida गौहु खलुएव गौहु गौर इदम सर्वम सर्वाहवा एनम एताह श्रयन्ते या एव या य एवं वेद द ट्रांसलेशन इज द काउ इंडीड इज द स्पीच द काउ इज द विराट मीटर द काउ इज द इडा द काउ इज इंडीड द काउ और देयर इज ओनली द काउ व्हिच इज लाइक काउ द काउ इंडीड इज ऑल दिस वन हु नोज दिस all of these go to him translation complete the importance of cow is emphatically asserted here in the agricultural society gau that is cow or bull was a very useful almost an indispensable animal the whole economy was dependent on it and this very idea is expressed in the statement sahasriva esha lakshmi yad unnata here lakshmi has to be translated as the thousand fold property or wealth in the form of lakshmi a herded or branded animal having the mark of possession on it thus after removing the grammatical difficulties the word lakshmi in the taitriya samhita and maitrayani samhita passages would mean this group of cattle is as if the thousand fold mark possession one's own possession is his wealth or property hence the word here can be translated as property or wealth does the word lakshmi which was which basically means an animal mark an animal which is branded or herded came to mean wealth and property in general and there is no wonder in it the latin word for money is pecunia derived from pecus which is neuter and pecus pecundis which is feminine both meaning herd of livestock the cognate word related to pecus is none else but pashu so and in the sense of uh, wealth it is paisa so is it not lakshmi the word for fee also has a similar origin it is a cognate of fee v i e h in german which means cattle 
what was the dakshina sacrificial fee given to the priest cows isn't it one more significant related word is capital what is it from kapud or capitis neuter meaning head is the origin not only of financial capital but also of chattel and cattle the statement goshto vai naam esha lakshmi also suggests the same meaning the gosht the cow pen where all the cattle are kept is one's property <clears throat> and is wealth and this wealth afterwards came to be understood as fortune and also auspiciousness naturally so since sarve guna ha kanchana aashrayante it may not be just a coincidence that the word fortune which has entered into english based on the name goddess fortuna also has both these meanings one more point should be noted here <clears throat> it is a general practice in indian culture that the performance of any religious rite is started early in the morning after becoming clean and purified having taken a bath then how is it that the evening is considered to be the auspicious time of the entry or advent of lakshmi in the house it is due to nothing else but the fact that lakshmi is nothing else but the cattle which come home in the evening if this development of meaning is accepted many things in indian languages and culture get explained for example the word dhanagara in marathi those who tend the animals and obtain wealth through it are dhanakaras and then dhanagaras shepherds this will also explain the origin of the surname dhanagre and shed light on the fact that even though lakshmi is a very important deity in the culture why it is that she is found in some particular groups of people only who have her installed in their house temples and worship every day it also explains the traditional belief that lakshmi and saraswati are rarely found together however at the same time it is also true that in maitrayani samhita this division is not very clear the society at that time being dependent mainly on agriculture and cattle tending almost everybody would have cattle they would themselves take care of those hence it is that references are found of gifts to brahmins in the form of cows it is significant in this regard that in the gonamika chapter the owner of the cows and the one who performs the rites regarding them is one and the same the word gajanta lakshmi vaibhava can also be explained as the richness which can maintain the cattle up to the elephant himself further when the place of cattle as money or currency was taken up by coins what is important is mudra the mark or the seal this is about the origin of the word lakshmi and its meaning in the vedas later in the puranas lakshmi is anthropomorphized that is she is given a human form and later she is deified and made a goddess the goddess of wealth beauty auspiciousness etc after this anthropomorphized lakshmi was deified later in the puranas she is said to have come out of ocean while the ocean was churned for ambrosia in the earlier references to this churning there are only seven jewels coming out and there is no reference to lakshmi afterwards she is added in the list presently the connection of lakshmi with vishnu is fixed in our minds such is not the case in the purana text there first she is related to shiva then in some text she approaches indra and then in still other she comes to vishnu and then settles there and it is not surprising since in the vedic text vishnu is prayed for progeny he is the fertility deity and his female counterpart there is aditi hence in puranas it took time for the settlement of the pair 
though later it has become an inseparable couple ayuta siddha vritti the connection between goddess fortuna and lakshmi is referred to before one more point should be added to it the greek goddess aphrodite and the roman goddess fortuna got merged into each other around 2nd bc and there came forth the goddess venus with the attributes of both she came in complete white from ocean it shows some connection with the later mythology of lakshmi there is one more very important point to be stated ancient india being agricultural society the cattle especially bulls play a very crucial role in it in rainy season though that is from the month of shravana till diwali the animals are idle it is noteworthy that almost all the festivals during that period are to felicitate animals that is for example bail pola rushi panchami it should actually be krushi panchami gauri lakshmi pujana and lakshmi pujana the broom actually is not the symbol of lakshmi as is the common belief but of alakshmi who is always worshiped or rather propitiated before lakshmi may this lakshmi be pleased with you and bestow wealth upon you thank you